The HKP-9A FC fights for Sweden in War Thunder. Let's see what it can do. First up, the HKP-9 is the Swedish designation for a batch of German B0105 helicopters that they received in the 1980s. There are two in the Swedish tech tree, and the one we're looking at here is the upgraded FC model. The original B0105 was a product of the late 1960s and started entering service in the early 1970s. It was highly successful on the commercial market, and flew eventually for dozens of customers, both military and civilian. Sweden first acquired the machine in August of 1987, where it was designated as HKP-9. The A version was armed with anti-tank weapons, and a total of about 20 would enter service, filling out two Army aviation battalions. Modifications were done, and the Swedish helicopters differed a bit from the base design. Among the changes were additional new weapon targeting systems, new night vision equipment, wire cutters for handling power lines, and of course, the weapon pylons. Well, the Swedes were realistic about the capabilities of the helicopter and what they could actually accomplish with such a small number of them, and the doctrine for their use mostly focused on harassment tactics, like attacking supply vehicles and forcing enemy armor into defensive posturing to slow their advance. The armed HKP-9A helicopters served in the anti-tank role right up until the year 2000, when they were converted to transportation roles and then finally retired completely in 2009. What we get in War Thunder are two versions of the HKP-9A, and today we're going to be focusing on the FC version, which sits at rank 6 in battle rating 9.7. This helicopter has a very simplistic weapon system with night vision, thermal sights, a 20x optical zoom, and sensor point of interest, but critically, no defensive systems of any kind. No radar warding receiver, no countermeasures, no infrared dampeners, nothing. The loadouts are pretty limited. You can take 12.7mm machine gun pods, which are very ineffective, along with tow missile launchers in a couple of combinations. That's it. In practice, the machine gun pods end up being pretty close to useless. You can scout tag targets with them, but your chances of actually blowing anything up are very slim. The missile you get is the RB-55C Heli Tow Missile which has semi-automatic command line of sight guidance. This is a version of the American BGM-71, and it's got an effective range of just about 4 kilometers. While it has respectable armor penetration, the warhead is somewhat small, and in practice, you end up needing direct hits on crew or ammo in order to actually blow up main battle tanks. Lighter vehicles, of course, are going to be a bit easier to crack, but you're still going to need a solid direct hit. A noteworthy caveat here is that you can only take four of these, which feels like a downgrade from the eight missiles of its predecessor, even if they were slightly weaker weapons, but ah oh well. Now, the flight performance of the HKP-9A is definitely a strong suit for this helicopter. It's reasonably fast, highly agile, and very easy to fly with only a small learning curve. The cyclic and collective are very responsive, and the tail rotor gives pretty strong reactions at basically any speed. My only gripe is that dropping altitude can be a little slower than you want it to, and even if you drop your collective to zero in an emergency, the helicopter feels a bit more floaty than you want it to be. A minor gripe, but it's enough that I noticed it. Now, flying the HKP-9A out into battle is pretty fun, as long as you keep its limitations in mind. First, in the new helicopter PvE battles, this thing is seriously crippled. Its only weapons are comparatively short-ranged, and it has no defensive systems whatsoever. So, if you get within, like, 6 or 7 kilometers of one of the strategic targets, 
Roland One makes an appointment with your face. Also, this helicopter has basically no armor, and if you get close enough to any of the convoys, the SPAA escorts they have are going to attack you, and it's probably not going to end well because those things are like laser accurate. Now, I had the most luck going in slightly behind some of the more advanced helicopters so that they could take out the anti-air uh, systems before I got there. Teamwork makes the dream work, I suppose. Now, flying out into close air support, that's really where the strength is. The combination of thermal sights and its agility can give you a pretty good edge, and the only real limiting factors are the small warhead on the tow missiles and the relatively small firing picture, which can make it difficult to get a good launch on targets sometimes. I actually ended up having a fair amount of success with this, using it not only to blow up targets but to capture map objectives. It's so easy to fly and to land, if you can get into an undefended objective, it's as good as capped. Most of the time, anyway. <clears throat> Visually, this is a pretty basic looking pod and boom type of helicopter. It's not bad looking, but it's obviously not a purpose-built attack helicopter, and not everyone is going to like its appearance. You don't get any custom skins or anything for it, but the default paint job is pretty nice, and if I'm being honest, it kind of grew on me over time. Now, landing this helicopter is really easy. It's incredibly stable in a hover, and even going in with normal flight mode ends up being rather forgiving. It lands on skids instead of wheels, and it tends to stick pretty well after touching down. Overall, easy landing. To close out on the HKP-9A FC model, this helicopter has thermal sights with a 20x zoom has good agility and pretty reasonable overall performance, and it's incredibly easy to fly. However, it has no defensive systems whatsoever, and a pretty limited weapon load. The final verdict on the HKP-9A FC is that this feels more like a side grade from its predecessor in the tech tree instead of an upgrade from it, but it's still a really fun helicopter that can be pretty effective once you get used to its limitations. As always, thanks for watching.